Okay, today we're talking about something new, and that is the PGY Tech Mantis Pod Pro. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Desmond and I make content for creatives that wanna take better photos and shoot better videos. And today we're talking about one of my favorite topics and that is tripods. What I have here is the PGY Tech Mantis Pod Pro. And we're gonna talk about build quality, functions, features, and honestly, whether or not this thing is worth $150. So let's get right into it. All right, so let's talk about the build quality. I mean, for $150, this is great build quality. I mean, you would have to expect that for the price tag that they slapped on this thing. One of the things that's really nice about it is the material that it's made out of. This is made entirely out of magnesium. So other than the rubberized padding here, some of the little ports um, and buttons, everything is made of metal. The nice thing about magnesium, per their website is that it is two thirds lighter than aluminum. Great thing about a vlogging tripod is that it is light. So the magnesium feels great in the hand. Again, the other nice thing about this is you get that weight you would normally expect from like a plastic tripod like the Manfrotto Pixie, but it has the durability and the rigidity of a metal tripod, which means these latches these ball heads, they feel incredibly strong. They feel like they will hold a lot of weight and I'll show you in a second that they do. They are really well made. I like the machining, no sharp edges. Everything looks very well refined. Um, but again, you would expect that for $150. All right, so a couple things to call out. You've already seen me open this up is the legs. Very cool design. I honestly enjoy how this feels in the hand when it is closed, right? You can take a look at this bad boy right here. Really nice and compact. Again, one of the things that I like about this particular design is that it is a bit reminiscent of the Peak Design Travel Tripod, which if you've seen my review before, when completely closed, everything kind of has its place. Everything fits, no like big gaps in between the mechanisms or the legs, everything just, feels well engineered and well designed. So let's open these legs up just so I can show you. This is their like butterfly designed legs. Really nothing mind blowing. It's a tripod. So you would expect it to have three legs and to hold your camera. Um, so yeah, nothing special about that. A couple of the things that are really nice though about this particular tripod. All right, we've got this We've got this button here, which when you apply pressure, you're able to move the ball head joint around, allowing you a number of positions, which I really like. That's the thing that I actually enjoy about this is the buttons and what they enable you to do is very quick. For example, I've got something like this. If you've seen my review or my vlogging setup in the past, my Ulanzi M11. I really like this tripod. It is flexible. It gives you the ability to make micro adjustments to how the camera is facing, how it's standing. But the problem is there's no like locked in state for this. Really nice thing about these buttons is, yeah, they give you very predefined positions. They lock, they stay, they're really strong. And that's helpful when it comes to a tripod this small. Another thing to showcase is this little button here. When you press it, you can kick the legs out, giving you a low profile mode or a low mounting mode for heavier cameras or when you just don't want your camera to topple over. So you want a shot closer to the ground or you've got this on a table. Uh, this is really helpful. This is one thing that I can't really do well with my flexi tripod or like a Joby Gorilla Pod. This, uh, I think I'm going to be using a lot. So the reason why they call it the Mantis Pod is because of this little hook, right? This is what sets this little tripod apart from a lot of the others on the market. I think it's a cool feature. I mean, again, what you'll ultimately do is you'll hook this 
onto some type of surface and these legs will provide additional support then you can maneuver your tripod head however you want to adjust the angle of your camera. It's cool to have, but I don't know how often I'll use it. All right, so we're making our way through the different features and functions. Really cool, just like the Peak Design Travel tripod, this has a built-in mobile mount, which is really helpful. Uh, again, don't know how often I'll use this, probably a bit more than the one on my Peak Design Travel tripod because this is a smaller tripod that I'll carry with me in my bag more often. But, you know, if I'm carrying this or any of my tripods, I probably got a camera with me and I would prefer to use my camera over my iPhone. But, you know, you never know. All right, and last, let's get to the ball head. Uh, this is a really nice ball head and I will honestly say this is probably the reason why I purchased this, right? So without the pro ball head, the Mantis pod regular uh, is $99. Comes with, I think like a little quarter 20 mount uh, screw that will let you screw that into the bottom of any of your cameras. Great, not particularly useful for me. I got the Mantis pod pro because I wanted this particular ball head. So let me throw this back on and let's just talk about some of the features. And obviously they're not mind blowing because this is a ball head, right? Ball heads, generally all the same. It's really nice. You've got your quick adjustment latch. Really nice 360 adjustability. Another thing that's kind of nice about this is if you get that close, you can also pan. You've got a panning feature. But really, let's talk about why I bought this. Because if you look here, we've got a quick detach snap lock mount. Works with your Arca Swiss compatible heads, includes Peak Design and the one that comes with this tripod. Uh, this is honestly the biggest reason why I bought it because it's so convenient, it's so fast. Uh, I will compare that to say this, the Ulanzi M11 ball head. Again, Arca Swiss compatible, nothing wrong with it, but you know, your classic twist on, twist off. I don't think you lose a lot of time doing that, but for me, someone who is very accustomed to the Peak Design travel tripod and the speed and convenience of that quick detach setup, this really sold me. All right, so let's just talk about how I use this now. Well, it's a tripod. I use it like a tripod. It's nothing special if you've seen my tripod reviews in the past. Um, they're also nothing special, right? Because a tripod does one job. It holds your camera up on its three legs, does it in a great way. This particular tripod I really enjoy because one, it's got a good compact size. I think the locking mechanisms for the mounting plate, the ball head, and also the locking systems for this adjustable uh, arm are nice. Right, they feel durable, they feel sturdy, they feel good enough to throw an expensive camera on. Not that this Ulanzi M11 wasn't, but again, just like your Gorilla Pods and things like that, there is always that like worry that it'll slip, it'll topple over and you'll drop, break, scratch your expensive A camera. This on the other hand feels incredibly sturdy. The other thing I like about this is just the holding positions. Again, this is like your classic vlogging mode. I don't find myself using that a lot, but it is one of the reasons why I bought it because I want to do it more often. A couple things that are really nice that I've noticed about this because of this locking mechanism is I kind of like this position. One, because if you wanted to, you could do some like underhand shooting, which is fine. You just flip the footage in post. But what I like about this is I can kind of hold it, cradle it underneath while I hold my camera by the grip. And it gives me some additional stability. That's honestly what I'm looking for as well, right? It's like not just a tripod, but I wanted a quick detach grip. I wanted something that served multiple purposes. Stand it on a table, grab it upside down, use it as an additional stability arm. And yeah, the Mantis mode seems to be cool and I'm sure that'll work great when I decide to hook it onto stuff. 
But for the most part, I really enjoy how convenient this tripod is. Also, the nice thing about this versus, if you want to look at size differences, Yulanzi is obviously much taller and longer. The nice thing about this piece is I can easily pop this into a bag. All right, so drop that into the bag. Drop my camera into the bag. I can also throw in my shotgun mic, close everything up, and it's good to go. I always had trouble sticking this Yulanzi tripod into this um, Ona bag because I love this bag. But now that I've got a smaller tripod, this is gonna be great. I'll be able to carry it more often. The other thing I didn't call out that I wanna do is this little piece right here is a Colchu mount. So just like my Ulanzi, I can mount my Rode VideoMic NTG to it and have my audio available there. And then one more feature I'm probably not gonna show you cause I'm not gonna use it very often is like a extended arm vlogging mode where you detach this ball head, you snap it onto, you know, I think a piece over here and then you're able to extend your uh, camera a little bit farther away from your face for vlogging. I use a 20 millimeter F 1.8 for that kind of stuff. So I actually don't find myself needing to extend very far, but if you're shooting with like a 24 millimeter or a 35 for some reason, yeah, you could extend the arms uh, of this tripod. Okay. This leads me to the last question, right? Is this tripod worth $150? 149 plus tax, then $20 shipping because shipping is not free. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so 170 some odd dollars out the door for this. Is it worth it? It's tough. I will say it is a hard product to recommend to most um, hobbyist filmmakers, photographers, vloggers, just because it's $170 out of pocket, right? It is cool. It does have like really nice design aesthetic. It has great features and functions, but you know what? It's still three legs. It can be accomplished by something like this. This was like $34. Plus I added a ball head for 20 bucks. So 50 bucks for a really cool, useful tripod with a lot of the same features. The reason why I bought this is almost entirely for this quick snap lock head. So for me, the reason why I bought this is yeah, I use a Sony FX3. I've got my Sony a7R4. These are $4,000 cameras. $150 tripod doesn't seem like a lot of money um, when compared to the cost of the camera that it's holding. And also I have an excuse, right? I get to make these YouTube videos, keeps my wife off my back. I can buy gear and make reviews about it. So outside of those reasons though, it's really hard to justify purchasing this tripod because it's so expensive and it's just a tripod. Um, for me though, because I do have a problem with buying gear and I have a very particular set of use cases I want for each of the tripods that I have, um, this was probably worth it. I get to make a video about it. It functions very much like my Peak Design travel tripod, which I love. So honestly, I probably would have paid anything for a mini tripod with a snap lock uh, mount like this. So I would say that if you are a filmmaker, a vlogger, a videographer, who one, is not on a tight budget, two, has a very particular set of features or functionality that you want that this thing meets, sure, spend the 150 bucks on it. I think it's worth it. It's gonna hold your camera up just fine. It's very sturdy, incredibly durable. And the things that it does, it does well. If you are just looking for a mini tripod, something to like hold up your a7 III or whatever, your a6000 cameras or some small mirrorless or a phone, um, and you don't need like the magnesium construction or the seven different modes that PGY Tech says this thing can do, or if you don't care for the snap lock, dude, do not spend $150 on this thing. Don't even spend $99 on the regular version because that mounting system sucks. Uh, I would pick up like the Ulanzi M11, 
or you know anything else under $150 or $100. Anyways, with that said, I still kind of dig this thing. And that's my review. So I will see y'all in the next one.